and talk to him and hopefully have him just pull over. And right now I don't see the police doing anything real radical at this point because right now there's nobody in danger as we watch this. Do you believe that people are being kept off of the freeway? I'm still somewhat astonished by the light traffic there on this Friday night. You know what, uh, I missed that. You were blocked by another radio. Could you say again? Ron, I was saying, do you think perhaps that motorists are being kept off that freeway because I'm astonished at the light level of traffic on this Friday night? It's very unusual. It, you know, it is unusually light uh, traffic out here. We're looking all the way westbound, and we can see almost up to the 605, and it continues light like this all the way up towards that 605 freeway. We were talking about what options they have. We have to keep in mind, Ron, that... Uh, Law enforcement. It's very difficult for us to tell. Uh, I don't know how, how much tighter that we have here, but, but uh, and, that, and he says that's as tight as we can go right now. So uh, from our vantage point, we cannot uh, tell exactly how many are in the vehicle at all. Again, all this is presumption now. It, it is apparent that the police believe it. Well, and that is great. Cowling's car, and, and that Simpson is in the driver's seat. We've received a report of a gun in the car. The car is heading north, which would be toward Los Angeles. We picked it up in Orange County. The vehicle is registered to Al Cowling, a former teammate, close friend of O.J. Simpson's, who has been a fugitive from justice now almost 12 hours. The car is not exceeding the speed limit, and the police are not forcing it and are not pulling it over. You see them all trailing it. That's the California Highway Patrol are trailing it, but not pulling Show it over. Show the people on the uh, bridges, Jeff. Obviously, everyone else is pulled off the lane as you look far ahead. No cars are there. Now it's going to go under another freeway, and you see police cars atop that freeway. Now, the police do have speakers in those vehicles. They can speak, as if you've ever been pulled over sometimes, you'll hear the police officer say, come out of your car, you were speeding or something. They can't speak to that car. Reuters is reporting that the police tracked O.J. Simpson through his cellular phone. Apparently, he was on the cellular phone, and they tracked him through there, and that's how they picked up this car. To, uh, uh, his mother and his children. No report on anything other than police staying, keeping a clear distance behind. There's no rule book on this because... Right here, Pat. This hasn't happened. Yeah, it, it seems to be that way, and it, uh, the traffic up above is still, uh, in fact, I'm trying to look down through my uh, lower window. It appears that CHP has stopped uh, traffic uh, on the on-ramps coming onto the 91 westbound, just to let the, uh, the officers proceed uh, at, a, at a nice uh, pace coming through here. Again, they don't want anything to happen uh, to this uh, suspect vehicle. They want to try to keep it as safe as possible but uh, there's definitely a crowd growing on every uh, overpass that we see, vehicles and people that want to get a glimpse and see if uh, this is in fact OJ coming down the, uh, the freeway. Apparently, we, the reports we get, they're about 40 minutes. Absolutely. From... And they are almost certain that OJ is in the passenger seat. Pat, we're just now crossing the 605. California at Highway Patrol is also telling so CNN, we're starting to and get I'm up repeating this to you as I hear Long it in Beach my area, earphones. Actually north, uh, east Long Beach. And again, OJ appears to be holding a gun to his head. Well, David, the uh, the 405 is not too and much OJ farther down than 91. Apparently, the in next, a cellular the phone, that he wants we'll to go to his mother's house. Will be the Long Beach or the 710 freeway. And after that, uh, would be the 110 no freeway. Report. We're getting. And then after that, you'd hit the 405. So, uh, I mean, it, it, at this point, we we really have no idea which uh, uh, or where the final destination uh, may be for uh, uh, purported O.J. Simpson inside this uh, white Bronco. You are listening to KCLL's coverage. There's an anchor in the studio and a man in the helicopter, a reporter.
That has uh, been identified. This is Larry King as uh, we stay atop this scene. Jim Hill, famed sportscaster in Los Angeles, an old friend, a former athlete. Old friend uh, the information that I have, so okay. I can't comment on that. But if there is perhaps a weapon or fear that there might be a weapon inside, safety has to come into uh, play here when you're considering trying to stop a vehicle, correct? Uh, yes, we have... Uh, uh, the CHP has policies for high-risk and or felony stops. And the officers, if they are involved in that, uh, will uh, uh, act according to policy. And they're well trained, and we go over these scenarios all the time in training. So the officers are well aware of the procedure to use in felony stops or high risk situations. At what speed are they going now, Officer Ferry? Or any idea? Uh, I don't have that information right now. Uh, I mean, it's apparently, not, certainly it's not, not a right. high speed pursuit. Uh, the location is, uh, it looks like it's westbound. SR-91 at perhaps uh, uh, Atlantic, I believe. Okay, we're just told now, uh, officer, that it's west of the 605, westbound on the on the 91 freeway. I see, okay. This is really a case, as it has been in so many of these uh, pursuits on Southern California freeway. You know L.A. Belt. That was the All Points Bulletin that was issued for uh, O.J. Simpson. They now have him very much in... There's uh, abreast of where they are and what the situation is. And for the time being, everyone seems... All right, if you could turn... The kid back in Greensboro, man, watching you play. Vince, if you could turn down your television set. People, man, I'm just praying that you guys will, will just give yourself up, man. Just stop. Please stop. In Jesus' name, just stop, man. Because we love you, man. <laughs> just stop. Just... <laughs> Vince Evans, we thank you for joining us, sir. Uh... How long have you been watching here? Have you been watching for most of the last uh, half hour or so? Yeah, I yeah. have. And your thoughts about what his mental state might be? To be doing something like this? This certainly isn't the O.J. you know. Well, it isn't, but I know he's been under a lot, and uh, a lot of pressure, and I'm sure that he's uh, feeling like the world is against him right now, but like myself, and I'm sure so many other people, <laughs> He's greatly loved, man. If he just knew how much people care for him and love him, and I know that he's just feeling like everything is going against him right now, but he's not doing himself any good by just proceeding like this. And I just want him to know how much he's loved, man, how much he's loved. Vince, you go back a long way with uh, O.J. Simpson to your college uh, playing days. Uh, you've known him for many, many years. Uh, Tell us your feelings about O.J. And, and what you know of him, what kind of a man he is. Well, I don't think you can say enough about this man. I mean, he, he epitomizes just everything that Jim Hill is so eloqu eloquently talked about. And, and uh, just in terms of being a role model, just in terms of him being a, a, a class guy, you know, instilling you know, classy qualities in, in individuals every way he went. He always uh, handled himself like a gentleman. And, uh, you know, you, I just can't say enough about him. As we're watching here, uh, Vince, we're seeing a car that's been pulling up and pulling back, and now we see the white Bronco take off at a speed that's uh, considerably faster than it's been driving before. We can't identify that other car that it has apparently been playing some form of tag uh, with the Bronco there. Mm -hmm. Don't know if it is, uh, obviously it's some kind of an official vehicle, but we don't know what uh, it is. But look at the people standing on the freeway there, waving. Uh, and, and there are a number of people standing on the side of the road. It, just uh, the curious and also well-wishers. We watch people wave and uh, low kisses as Mr. Simpson drives by which is to continue with our coverage 
of this basketball game, and that means at this portion of the telecast, before the resumption of the game, the start of the third quarter, to bring you this interview, which I did yesterday with Pat Riley. It has been a three-year process for Pat in New York, and now the pursuit of the champion taken to Parker Center and uh, booked uh, on the outstanding uh, warrants. The, the Ford Bronco right now is uh, continuing to move through very Laura, that the on-ramps have been blocked off. Law enforcement is uh, leapfrogging. And as we go through one jurisdiction to another... Uh, ...near the 110 freeway. And it's interesting to note the time. This started apparently around 6.45 a little bit after the main part of rush hour uh, authorities though are attempting to clear the freeway although you can see a car right there going up right next to the bronco uh, not an easy job clearing the freeway oj simpson uh, formally charged today with two counts of murder he was supposed to surrender at eleven o'clock today uh, basically his attorney turned his back and oj managed to get out get away get away apparently with his good friend uh, al cowlings now we have a little bit of an update this is off the associated press wire or excuse me the reuters wire according to a someone who is monitoring police scanners the man in the car says he would not give himself up he's in the back of the vehicle he has a gun to his head and he says he will hurt himself he is demanding to be taken to his mother now that Apparently is information off a police scanner, according to the Reuter Newswire. We continue to watch from Sky 11, this 1993 Ford Bronco. We do know that this is the vehicle that belongs to Al Cowlings, former pro football player himself, a longtime friend of O.J. Simpson. O.J. Simpson, when he was preparing to surrender this morning to be picked up by LAPD and taken to Parker Center, wrote three notes, one to his mother, one to his family, and one that his attorney and a friend of his, excuse me, a friend read this afternoon at the attorney's office in Century City. And to listen to that note, it sounded very much like a farewell goodbye from O.J. Simpson. Said that he basically thought he had done what was right <clears throat> all his life and wanted to be remembered for that. He asked the media to leave his kids alone and for all of us to remember him for what he had been. He also proclaimed his innocence in that note. He said, quote, first, everyone understand I had nothing to do with Nicole's murder. Went on to say, if we had a problem, it's because I loved her so much. Don't feel sorry for me. Thanks for making my life special. I hope I help yours. Peace and love, OJ. His attorney had said that he'd been extremely depressed. He was under the care of doctors. One friend is quoted as saying he had never seen OJ Simpson so low. The vehicle, we believe, with Al Cowlings and, and uh, O.J. Simpson in it, and it looks like the emergency flashers are going on that uh, Bronco. That's the first time we've had sort of this view of the vehicle. And uh, it is going westbound again. Uh, it appears the way the sun is hitting the front of the vehicle, although it's a little bit difficult to tell because they have made a transition from one freeway to another. And there you see just a huge number of police cars, CHP, Orange County Sheriff, LAPD, presumably Los Angeles County uh, Police Department as well, as well as L.A. County Sheriff's cars, all a respectful distance behind, just waiting, hopefully, for this to play itself out peacefully without any further loss of, of life or any more damage and destruction. On the phone now, we have psychiatrist Dr. Tom Linden. And Dr. Tom, can you hear me? Yes, I can, Chris. Uh, at this point, we have reports that O.J. Simpson is in this vehicle. One report says he has a gun pointed to his head, says he will not be taken alive and wants to be taken to see his mother. At this point, what would you deduce psychiatrically from those comments? Well, I can't obviously... Many people are out here, either on the freeway or on the bridges, on the overpasses, just to catch a glimpse of this situation as it goes by. So people have actually come to watch after watching this live shot. They've come to see it for themselves, you're saying, Ron? And, uh, I miss that. And think in another. The end result of that, or the end station of that, is multiple personality disorder. And here we have a more acute phase of that, a dissociated state. What part, doctor, does the fellow driving the car, his old friend, play in this now? Well, he's, the key, I think, in many ways the key, and I think his friend Vince is the key. What uh, O.J. has to know is that he's not being abandoned. He's not all no. alone. He's very angry at all that's happened to him, but he has to know that he's not being abandoned. In my book, First time, one of his clients has skipped 
and he skipped in a big way this morning. And keep in mind as you see some of these pictures that they are being tracked by live equipment uh, from helicopters, from cars. There's going to be some breakup in that video as they continue to try to follow the police chase of the Bronco with O.J. Simpson in it. So there will be some video breakup, but that's just a very normal for you to watch. We will uh, continue to monitor KNBC for further developments, and we'll bring you those throughout the course of the evening and, of course, a complete wrap-up tonight on King 5 News at 11 o'clock. Third quarter. And the helicopter, obviously the reason the helicopter has gotten out of pattern here is there are commercial flights coming in and out of that airport. And you can't apparently, because if you're landing in L.A., as those people do, they always land from the east. They will go right over the 405, so they've obviously steered this helicopter to be out of position of not hitting a passenger plane. Now you see the tip of the helicopter outside the cameras. Again, the car continues to travel. Trail by California Highway Patrol. We understand that Dr. Michael Baden can hear us. How are you, Michael? Hi, Larry. Sorry to be talking to you at this time. I'm yeah, Michael, Michael is an old friend. He's the famed forensic pathologist for New York City for many, many years. One of the foremost people in his field. Uh, I know you're not a psychologist or a psychiatrist, Michael, but you were with O.J. today. Can you tell us? Now it appears they've moved past some of those dangerous areas with planes taking off and landing, and they have a pretty good view again of O.J. Simpson in the lead car, the Bronco. The highway is clearing. Some people stopping as they see the uh, and hear the police vehicles coming. Many people stopping simply to take a look at what, what is happening. This story has shot been... that is bringing us in closer. And uh, while it is closer, we are still not able to uh, uh, discern uh, if yes, uh, go ahead, Another angle for us if uh, O.J. Simpson is in uh, the back. It would appear that uh, they have their uh, flashing lights on, the uh, distress uh, lights, uh, lights you uh, near, use when you pull over and you want to alert the fellow motorists that uh, you're having trouble. So I've got a uh, certainly getting that today. Pushing Unless along this freeway right without uh, yeah. much problem at all. Uh, quite interesting to see what, what, what is going to develop here in the next uh, five minutes or so. Uh, currently approaching the uh, 40510 interchange uh, northbound. Uh, is at, so you're right <coughs> near the, the uh, Santa Monica freeway. That's and it looks as though you're the, the car is proceeding at, what would you estimate, 40, 45 miles an hour? Yeah, that, approximately that speed is uh, between 35 and 45 miles an hour, I would estimate. Uh-huh. Okay, then uh, from the I-10 interchange up to Sunset Boulevard is only going to be maybe three or four minutes more. Oh, uh, most definitely. Uh, in the next 60 seconds or so. Uh, yes, uh, the, uh, the off-ramps are, are quite blocked. It uh -huh. appears that... Uh, that a good number of people are, are pulled uh, on the uh, right shoulder and are out of their vehicles watching this this uh, procession proceed up the uh, the 405 freeway here. It's uh, in this area. It's becoming uh, more prevalent that uh, people are, are stopped alongside the road and are and are watching this as it passes them by. Uh, what inter uh, what uh, off ramp are you coming up on now? You should be approaching uh, pretty close to Wilshire Boulevard, aren't you? Uh, coming up on Santa Monica Boulevard at this time, right. and uh, that off ramp is not blocked. Mm -hmm. and uh, the, the vehicle is still in the, in the far left lane, uh, All right, so continuing let, let, northbound. Let's mention to our viewers that there are only uh, three off-ramps now remaining if he's going to go to, to that uh, Brentwood uh, estate. There's the one coming up on Wilshire, which are probably approaching now. That's and, affirmative, Hal. Uh, okay, and then right after that, probably another 30 to 40 seconds, you'll be at Waterford. We'll see if he, if he turns off on Waterford, but he's in the left lane. Yes, uh, left lane, currently left lane. You can see other traffic there with the vehicle. Uh, the left lane uh, and the other traffic are, are uh -oh. pulling off to the right shoulder at this time uh, ahead of the, uh, the uh, vehicle. Okay, now, okay. now it's crucial to see if, if he starts moving over to the right lane. It doesn't appear that, that that will be the case due to the number of vehicles blocking those the right lanes. Uh, Craig, Eric Spillman is right there at the intersection of Sunset and the 405. Eric, can you read us? Go ahead and tell us what you see. Well, first of all, uh, we're just coming up. We're going north on the uh, 405. We're coming to Sunset Boulevard right now. 
And I can tell you that I've seen CHP officers stopping people from getting onto the 405. The southbound 405, as you know, is a parking lot with everybody stopped and out of the cars looking, uh, waiting for this chase to come. But the Sunset Boulevard off-ramp is open, and it appears uh, that uh, he, they think that he might get off here. The whole Moving over to the right, which means he may take that Sunset Boulevard off-ramp. He's now moving over to the right lane. Go, go, follow him. Uh, Craig, are we approaching Sunset Boulevard go, now? Yes, we are now. Uh, okay, we're approaching uh, Sunset Boulevard. There's a crowd of people who are on the bridge here watching the, uh, right as he approaches the Sunset Boulevard. <clears throat> All right, Eric. It looks like there's a... Eric, it looks, it appears now as though he is getting... As I recall, there are two lanes on the on uh, the Sunset Boulevard off ramp. He is in one of them, and that's the lane he would be using. He is looks like he's getting off there. Okay, Hal. It looks like uh, he is getting off at the uh, off ramp at Sunset. All right. Here. Okay. Uh, getting off. He's on the off ramp now. Coming up. Uh, coming up the off ramp uh, at Sunset. Lots of uh, people at the uh, overpass at Sunset, and possibly here will be a westbound turn. Uh, en route to Brentwood. That's right. He looks he's like he's go. in the left lane now. Yeah. Uh, making uh, making a left turn. The the intersection's uh, free and he's clear and now making his he, left turn uh, westbound on Sunset. All right. Uh, he must have gone right by you, Eric. It's, well, it's, he has, uh, and we're staying ahead of it. We're going to his mansion, believing that he's going there. But he, it was an amazing situation on that overpass. There, there were people running around on top of there. I don't know how he's going to be able to drive through all those people. All along Sunset Boulevard, there are people stopped as well ahead of the chase. We can only assume he's going to his, his home on Rockingham in Brentwood. Okay, Eric, that uh, that's uh, exactly what what had happened. Uh, he did take that uh, that Sunset Boulevard off ramp, as, as we had speculated, and now he is proceeding west on Sunset Boulevard. Uh, he just went past Woodburn and will be approaching Barrington Avenue. And there's a red light at Barrington. There are lights on this. I don't know what he's going to do, how he's going to respond to traffic lights. He hasn't had to cope with that, but uh, there's quite a lot of traffic lights. We're hearing the sirens behind us now. He's right behind us. We're hearing the sirens. The police have their sirens on. Both sides of the street have pedestrians. All right, they just, just passed us at Barrington. He just went past Barrington. Just it's only at Barrington, followed by the sheriffs. They're Orange County Sheriff Santa Ana police officers who are in pursuit. Okay, Eric, it's only now probably a, a, a four, three minutes at the most, I would say, uh, to his home in, in That's Brentwood. That's right. His home west of the 405 on a street called Rockingham. Right. Uh, he will have to make a right turn onto Rockingham, and that is where his mansion is. It looks like at least 10... Well, maybe not 10, but 7 or 8 Santa Ana Police, Orange County uh, Sheriffs and Highway Patrol officers following them, as well as regular private citizens on motorcycles who are following this chase now. And we're right behind them. I know, uh, how far behind the uh, Bronco are you, Eric? I'd say we're less than a mile behind. Okay. What, what's going to happen is that street, Rockingham, is a very, very narrow street. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see how that's going to work when he, when he tries to make that right turn onto Rockingham and go up towards his mansion. The mansion itself is about a mile or so up Rockingham on the right-hand side. Yeah, that's right, that's right, Eric. And also, once again, uh, if we can continue to speculate, uh, it will be interesting to see if he is allowed to go into the mansion itself or whether he will be stopped short of it. That's a, that's a good question. The Los Angeles County Sheriff's and yeah. California Highway. This changed the entire scenario, uh, getting off the freeway, and it's, uh, I, I, I'm telling you, I'm looking at this along with you, I think that's Sunset Boulevard. Yeah, it looks like Sunset. And, uh, uh, the trees and the way, the and, configuration. Right. And so uh, moving up into, uh, into the Brentwood area where uh, O.J. Has, uh, has had a home for quite some time and also the home of uh, his late wife, Nicole Brown Simpson. Uh, again, police uh, are in pursuit. They have not closed in. This has been going on since uh, about an hour and 15 minutes. They have kept their distance. They have been uh, following diligently, but they have not made any effort to uh, derail OJ's vehicle. They have made no effort to pull up beside him. 
Uh, again, here is O.J. Simpson. Yes, indeed, it would appear that he is, in fact, trying to reach his neighborhood, if you will. And you see people chasing after the, the Bronco, which is the worst thing they could do. Mark Coogan, uh, are you able to hear us now? Look, there's one of the satellite trucks, so I think this, is, in fact, is pulling up. He's pulling right up uh, to his home. Uh, sure looks like it here. Uh, here he is now. Yeah, Here's the car that, pulling into the estate. driveway. Uh, Mark Coogan, yeah, we're watching. We're me? watching O.J. Simpson pull into his driveway. He, he has driven all the way, and here's somebody coming up beside him. And look, there's a, a bit of a scuffle here. Oh. And uh, Al Callings, who is at the wheel, apparently telling is telling whoever to got, came up there to get out of the way, to get back, and to stay out of the way. O.J. Simpson is in the back of this vehicle. It has tinted windows. We're unable to see a, a, a clear picture of him. But uh, the reports we've received off of the police scanners is that Mr. Simpson has a gun to his head and obviously is threatening suicide. Mr. Cowling, as he has done since this, uh, yeah, since this drive on. began an hour and 15 minutes ago, has been waving everybody off, telling them to stay back. Uh, Al Callings is a friend. Uh, you just know that he is doing the best job he can to emotionally calm down O.J. Simpson right now, telling the Jews to put the gun down. Police, as you saw, are on the premises. They've been there all day. They, too, are staying back right now. And uh, all we can do is watch along with you, keep our fingers crossed uh, that O.J. will, in fact, put that gun down and that this will end peacefully. But O.J. Simpson has returned home. After it's all said and done, he took off from Orange County and he decided he was going to go home. The reports all day have been that O.J. has in fact been suicidal. He wrote a letter that uh, thanked many of his friends, his former teammates, his uh, golfing buddies, uh, his broadcasting friends, and uh, people he's known over the years. And uh, on any other occasion, we would have uh, labeled it a suicide note but uh, the friend who read it told us that uh, it was a letter that he wanted read to the public. Uh, the word suicide wasn't mentioned only, we, only when his attorney, Robert Shapiro, said that he believed O.J. was suicidal and that uh, O.J. had been under the care of psychiatrists and physicians. Uh, days, very despondent. Linda uh -huh. Brickstone apparently is at Park. The phone when talking to uh, other people, perhaps law enforcement, it's very, very difficult to figure out just what the next move is going to be. Craig, what do you see from up there in the uh, your pilot's position? Well, Stan, we've got uh, we've got the vehicle in the driveway uh, with flashers on. Uh, so uh, someone approached the vehicle initially, and then uh, believed the security guards or police officers pulled them away from the vehicle. And uh, right now, it's just uh, it's a waiting game, it looks like. Where, where are the law enforcement officers? Can you see them around? Are they all outside? Uh, it looked like they came out of the house, or were in the house and came out of the house, and then went back into the house. Uh, at this point in time, I do not see uh, too many, uh, too many uh, law enforcement people uh, in and around the vehicle. However, that's not to say they could be uh, uh, close proximity to the house and the vehicle around the grounds. Craig, uh, let, let, let me recommend that we, we stay um, uh, uh, right on uh, your, uh, your, your position there uh, because I have a feeling that uh, the car didn't just drive in there to sit there, that something is happening right now. I would suspect there is some kind of communication, cellular communication between a cell phone and uh, uh, either the house or law enforcement in that area, some kind of negotiation. To the, officer with, the officers were inside ready to pull him back, like they knew he was coming. They were aware he was coming. The, the situation now, uh, Linda, is what to do. Very tense. Uh, if they knew he was coming there, though, there may be some situation where he is, you know, said he will surrender or something like that. We also know that he has a cellular phone there, and uh, the Los Angeles Police Department has some very excellent uh, psychologists on their staff, people who are crisis counselors, if you will, and that is a definite possibility that they are trying to make contact with O.J. Uh, on the telephone. I, I have no evidence that there is a phone being passed uh, to the back of that Bronco, but uh, it would appear to me that uh, they are making that effort, uh, maybe talking to Al Callings, that they would like to talk to O.J. and, uh, and, and tell him that uh, 
it would be in his best interest to put that gun down and to step out of that vehicle with his hands in the air. Well, Carl, if I were to guess, based on the information we've been able to patch together here at Parker Center, uh, they definitely knew where he was going about 10 minutes ago when he was still on. In altitude, uh, we certainly want to uh, cooperate uh, in that respect, not endanger anybody. And as we say, we hope that this will end, or, uh, that this will end uh, uh, peaceably, but uh, we'll, we'll see what happens here. We'll stay on, uh, on that uh, Ford and see what happens. But I do suspect that there are negotiations going on right now. And the fact that the officers of the scene have kind yeah, of stayed the other side of the wall, yeah. <laughs> there's no one rushing or standing around just the white car sitting there in the courtyard yeah i think his motivation uh, he said was to see uh, his mother who was at the estate and uh, perhaps the children now the children may not be there we don't know that maybe they're being brought there and there may be some kind of negotiation that perhaps if he could see his mother and the children and uh, make some statement perhaps or talk to them that maybe then there would be a surrender to uh, the police uh, did you uh, gain altitude? Are you up at a... Uh, yes, Hal, we sure did. Uh, we're about uh, 2,100 feet above the scene. Okay. That's uh, mean sea level, which puts us up about 1,500 feet above, uh, above the ground. You still have an excellent picture, and we can see everything going on at that point, uh, Craig. Yes, this uh, excellent uh, vantage point from, uh, from this location, as you can see. Uh, as details develop here, we, we should uh, be able to uh, see quite clearly uh, what will take place. O.J. Simpson wrote a letter to his children and to his mother and then to his friends. And his attorney... Yeah, said, that letter was, uh, was read this afternoon. And what it did was to, to uh, proclaim his innocence. He claimed that he was uh, innocent in... Uh, in the... Uh, in, uh, innocent of the charges of... Um, murder in the first degree, two counts of murder in the first degree, with special circumstances. I think it's just a matter now of uh, waiting to see. Do you see any other law enforcement activity uh, in the area, Craig, as you look down? Uh, yes, as you can see on the, the perimeter road here, uh, there is uh, quite a number of vehicles that were uh, in the pursuit with the, uh, with the white Bronco. They have all uh, positioned themselves uh, around the house. And uh, I suspect that uh, there are quite a number of officers uh, surrounded, uh, surrounded the house at this time. There were evidently uh, officers inside the house also. Yes, that's what appeared as we came up. Uh, someone approached the vehicle initially and was uh, pulled away from the vehicle by what it looked like uh, some sort of officers. I could not tell their uniforms. You know, uh, Craig, to put it in, in, in one kind of perspective, the belief earlier was when the letter was... Trying to head north attorney's office at Mr. Shapiro's office. The view was that he was a fugitive uh, from justice. Well, he is not a fugitive uh, in, in one respect anymore. We, we know where he is, and uh, he is, you know, there was speculation he might be out of the country, um, maybe hiding someplace. That is not the case anymore. That situation has now changed. O.J. Simpson is back at his home. And uh, this is not a friend's home or uh, uh, any secondary home. This is his primary residence. Uh, where he has been all day is difficult to speculate. He was out in the valley, then down in Orange County. And now he came back up the uh, San Diego freeway and has come home again. Uh, I doubt that he will be leaving again. The uh, police now know where he is. We have found him. The door is opening. And let's see what happens now. We'll watch with you. This is the driver's side of the vehicle. Okay, someone just uh, got out of the vehicle, approaching the front door, dressed in black, and uh, entered, looks like they entered the, uh, the front of the house there. Uh, possibly O.J. Simpson uh, at this right. point in time, from this vantage point, it was uh, difficult to see or uh, positively identify that individual. In the brief view that we had, whoever that individual was, whether it was O.J. or not, the person did not appear to be carrying a weapon. No, it, it didn't appear that at all. And uh, they, in fact, they, uh, they walked rather casually to the front door. So, yes. so it, uh, it'll be interesting to see what develops yeah. here. Yeah, the reason I mention that is because there, the reports were that O.J. did have a gun to his head as the uh, car was driving up the uh, 405 freeway. So there did not seem to be a weapon 
for that person who walked into the house. Uh, right, Hal. We're going to reposition here and possibly get around to the other side of the vehicle so we can possibly see inside that open door. Uh, we're going to come around here and... Uh, and is now free. ...vantage point to possibly uh, get some additional information. Now, the best, the best we can determine, there is still one other person, at least one other person in that vehicle. Is that correct? Uh, at this point, I, I, from the information that I've gathered up to this point, it, it appears right, no, that some, someone, someone came back. approached back to the vehicle and uh, entered the vehicle. Uh, let's do leave ...because it was a man dressed in black. Uh, that very well could have been an... The Brentwood home here of O.J. Simpson, only about uh, 10 minutes ago after a... ...round, uh, thank you to KTLA. Uh, when they pulled off the freeway off of... ...from this aerial shot, it looked like that man is bulkier and stockier than O.J. Simpson is. But they are pretty much, they're both big men. Mm -hmm. But that is the man who got out the driver's side door. We presume that to be Al Cowlings, who was driving. We're not sure at this point in that 911 call whether it was Al Cowlings who said that O.J. Simpson had a gun to his head or whether it was O.J. Simpson himself saying that he had a gun to his head. One can assume, I think, rather safely that Al Cowlings is having a conversation at this point with somebody inside that vehicle that someone, presumably O.J. Simpson, perhaps this is the conversation between two longtime friends that will resolve this odyssey this afternoon and this evening without any more violence, without any more bloodshed. This is just one of two different vehicles that authorities had been searching for today. They had also put out an all-points bulletin for Simpson. Uh, they were searching for this white Ford Bronco that belongs to Cowlings and also Simpson's black Mercedes. There's been no sign of that whatsoever. So it appears uh, if the two are in this vehicle... Now, that, Al uh, Cowlings, uh, we believe that to be Al Cowlings, holding his hand up, his palm up, perhaps toward the police officers behind him, pointing toward the front door to O.J. Simpson's home, obviously having a conversation with someone inside at this point. Now, unfortunately, now Al Cowlings is the man we believe to be Al Cowlings, is obscured by that. As, uh, uh, but As you can see, obviously they're uh, negotiating and talk to, talking uh, to police officers. Two police officers that are in the, in the house back to the vehicle so it yeah. appears that uh, someone else is definitely in the vehicle yes. uh, and there's an intermediary there uh, discussing things with the police they were gesturing toward uh, something uh, behind in, in the back or, or toward the rear of the uh, property there okay but here's a I believe a man is uh, pleading to negotiate with people here uh, the, the police obviously and uh, it's uh, obviously very stressful down there uh, from from these pictures as you can see a very delicate situation uh, taking place as we watch here now we do know that there was at least one gun in that car It would be uh, very interesting if anybody on the ground would possibly, uh, possibly able to get some audio here of uh, of this uh, of this gentleman. He's quite quite upset at the moment. Yeah. Quite emotional here, uh, which uh, would would seem to uh, to dictate the the stressfulness of the situation, and and hopefully uh, uh, this type of situation uh, would not escalate into something. A little more dramatic. And both of the officers. The officers are, appear to be uh, calming the individual down and reassuring them that, uh, that things are uh, safe. Well, there's no doubt, as we mentioned before, that that O.J. is in a uh, particularly agitated state of mind. Uh, that is, I think, is a is a truism. Consequently, what goes on from from here on is very difficult to ascertain. I would suspect also that his lawyer is going to be involved in these negotiations also. But it does appear, and uh, this once again is just guessing, that O.J. is still in that vehicle and probably on the passenger side. Uh, that seems to be a, a, a fairly logical deduction, I think, because the person who got out is doing some kind of negotiation or talking rather than dealing with law enforcement and talking to somebody in the car.
Yeah, most definitely. That's what it appears to be. Uh, Hal, yeah. Eric uh, Spillman now is, is uh, live on the grounds of the yeah. house. Let's switch to him right now. Eric? Well, Stan and Hal, unfortunately, we can't see as well from our vantage point as you can from yours. We are about, oh, I'd say 500 yards away from the driveway where the drama is all taking place. And as you can see, there's a line of black and whites, highway patrol, Orange County sheriffs, and LAPD patrol cars with their lights flashing all the way back down towards Rockingham. Uh, and uh, uh, Eric, let me just mention, it looks as though something is going to happen right now. The person in the car just moved toward the entrance of the doorway. And Hal, uh, Stu uh, Nahan just called in and identified the gentleman standing there in the courtyard. It is Al Colling. Yeah, it, it is uh, Who? a professional football player and his and best, close, friend, close friend, best yeah. friend. Played ball at SC with, uh, yeah. with OJ, and he was the man driving the car, and he was also the man with uh, OJ Simpson at the house in uh, San Fernando Valley. Right. Now, he's backed away from the vehicle, and LAPD inside the house just inside I the i would doorway. think that what you're going to see is uh well once again we're speculating but i i would suspect that oj is in that vehicle and will probably come out of that vehicle he didn't come all this way to sit in the car now, everyone at the scene i know everyone hoping for a peaceful solution to this entire scenario jan he's standing Right out in the open, there are two police officers just inside the door. Right. At least two. There may, be, there two. may be lots more. Right? <clears throat> two that we've seen at this yeah. point, yes. And then he had his hands moving in a very emotional manner, mm -hmm. what they were saying. Right, it was unclear who he was speaking to, whether he was speaking to law enforcement officials, perhaps, there by the wall, or, or maybe even uh, neighbors, bystanders who were there. It's, it's hard to tell from this point. But at one point, yes, he was very emotional. <clears throat> Helicopter picture acting up a little bit here, but they'll have that stabilized. Yeah, that, don't, that only lasts for a couple of seconds. A little bit of noise in the picture, but uh, so Al is now going back to the vehicle. So critical, as we pointed out before, is the fact that they believe that uh, any type of intrusion, especially by the media, could trigger a confrontation, could trigger something to happen. If you look ahead of me here, I'm not sure if our photographer can get a shot here, but uh, Steve, you can pan off to the right. Pan, uh, if you can pan right, Steve. Al, I think we're gonna stay with our helicopter okay. picture. If you just described for us what you're seeing. Okay, now we've got a split screen and we can see what you're talking about, Al. Okay, very good. As I said, uh, nothing apparently from the house Okay, Al, to just update you and the rest of our viewers, the man uh, we believe to be Al Cowlings. Uh, this is Larry King in Washington uh, at CNN Studios, staying atop this scene for you now through Fox 11. We have just been told that two photographers who try to run across the lawn have been arrested by the police. We have affirmed that Al Cowlings is uh, apparently negotiating. He was the driver of the car, the longtime Simpson friend and teammate at USC. There are police in the doorway. This is the driveway to the O.J. Simpson house in Brentwood. He's driven through two counties, and we followed him all the way. That's a police car behind him, and O.J. is in the car, apparently. Cowlings is now either by the door. Let's go back to Channel 5's coverage, KTLA. Back behind the yellow tape, they're, they're so far away that they're not seeing anything. They're being kept back by police. We have seen a number of police officers going in looking as if they were SWAT team members, people wearing the bulletproof vests. They just sort of arrived here on the scene. Well, what's interesting to us, Eric, uh, and, and we're looking at it, and you and I both have different perspectives. What's interesting to us is that he is staying in the vehicle, not getting out. He obviously came back to his home to be at his home, to be in the home. That? But he's not in the home. He's, he is staying in the vehicle at the present time. I suggest there's some quid pro quo here. There's something he is waiting for. So that um, he is going to stay in the vehicle 
and probably still has that weapon, uh, they're going to stay in the vehicle until something happens. What that something is, we don't know. We can only speculate, but um, that, I suspect, is what's happening right now. He could be waiting, as we said before, Eric, for Robert Shapiro to show up on the scene. And then the three officers standing there with uh, no protection in front of them, uh, uh, not apparently worried as to the dangerous situation, but they've been out there uh, uh, negotiating, obviously, mm -hmm. is what they're doing. Right. They've been speaking. There's been communication going on either between the police officer there and and Al, or perhaps even even O.J. and the police officer are communicating at a distance, but within view of each other. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm sure that he has a, a cellular phone there because we've been informed of that, and mm -hmm. I'm sure that a lot of stuff's been going on over that cellular mm -hmm. phone. But you can actually been, see the officers speaking. The, we see officers, we've officers running in now. Yeah. Two officers running in beside those patrol cars, wearing the bulletproof vests. You know, we, we do have to put in... in But police, according to the scanners, are listening to them. They've been very, very upset, of course, with all the helicopter traffic overhead, saying it's been extremely difficult to hear. Uh, I heard at one point they were yelling to try and get the helicopters out of there. I don't know what happened with that. But they, again, they are, according to the police scanners, talking to O.J. on the phone from inside the house, trying to negotiate something. All right, Jane. Uh, now, where are you in relation to Al Nipo, who's about a block and a half uh, south of the house? I have no idea. I, I right. am. I am about. I am. I would say a block. Uh, a block due um, east. Okay. And there is a big crowd here. Of course, people. In, I, I just don't know what to make of it. Jovial laughing, running to the scene, uh, having like a party. Well, and that's what Dr. Tom Linden, a psychiatrist we had on earlier. The man who's been talking to O.J. Simpson inside is, is, and we see police officers in the front door of the house now, Jane. Police officers standing there, openly standing there, right. talking apparently to the man who is sort of in the middle, literally, between O.J. Simpson and the officers. Officers at the top of your screen, O.J. Simpson in that vehicle at the bottom of your screen, and the man we believe to be Al Cowlings talking to both sides. It's interesting to note the way the two officers were standing there. Uh, we can assume that they're wearing any kind of bulletproof vest that they can, but they were not uh, in a way protecting themselves. They were basically just standing there almost casually talking to the driver of that vehicle. Al Collings looks like he is still oh. attempting to talk to them and relaying perhaps some information to Simpson believed to be also in that vehicle there. Going back to what Dr. Linden was saying is that, that uh, it, it might be a very natural human reaction to want to stop and and wave to a man who is in deep, serious trouble, not only legally, but obviously psychologically as well. But Dr. Linden pointing out that that was probably the worst possible thing that any one of us could have done, because while we meant it as a show of support and sympathy, it might well be the, the uh, agitation factor. Yes, go ahead, Jane. It appears from, from what we're hearing on the scanners, they are trying to uh, put a phone call, perhaps, from O.J. through to his mother. They're trying to arrange that right now. Jane, is there an indication that his mother is in the house, or is she the door of O.J. Simpson's home? As Jane Wells was telling us, the police are trying to work out a phone contact between O.J. Simpson and his Chris, mother. Chris, actually, there, if you can hear me, Chris. Yes, go ahead. They're trying to get the phone number. Uh, they're trying to get the phone number so they can hook it through. Okay. Again, we have more people running down the street here. Now, there are a number more police officers, Jane, and I'm not sure what you can see from your vantage point, but a number... Very difficult getting information from the scene because police have instituted a blackout. Police officers... Cowlings there now, isn't it, with, uh, facing to the left of our screen? In the, in the dark clothes, yeah. it, uh... We love the juice save the juice. A lot of these people came by on motorcycles. They followed the police uh, motorcade that followed Simpson to this residence and they parked their motorcycles, some cars, and they're gathering here uh, trying to show their support for Simpson as a standoff is taking place just about 500 yards in front of them right now. All of them very enthusiastic, hopeful that uh, O.J. Simpson will emerge from the car safe and be taken into custody safely. That's what they're saying right now. It's reminiscent of a movie I saw years ago. I think it was called Dog Day Afternoon with, uh, if I remember correctly, Al Pacino and uh, 
a crowd gathered uh, outside uh, somewhere, and they, they, they were outside a bank, and uh, they were chanting. I don't know if they were chanting Attica or whatever they were chanting, but th this is reminiscent of that uh, sometimes. It, uh, you it's know, strange you say that. Art. It's strange you say that, Harold, because right now this crowd is chanting juice, juice. You can hear them. Yeah, it's a very, very bizarre situation here. Uh, our television camera undoubtedly is sparking. Uh, we're concerned. There's too much of uh, there's too much problems in Los Angeles. We want to see O.J. freed. Laura, I see people actually climbing up uh, the hillside. It looks like into people's yards uh, to try to circumvent the police line, to circumvent the roadblock, and try to get a better look at this. Uh, fathers bringing their children, bringing their home video cameras. This uh, this is really quite a scene. Well, it is quite a scene, and uh, we, uh, according to your information earlier, are waiting for a crisis negotiating team to come online. Keep in mind, as we watch this now, darkness is beginning to set in on the west side at uh, almost uh, 825 on this uh, uh, Friday night, and um, it uh, is going to be interesting to see if uh, the law enforcement people there uh, bring in lights and illuminate uh, the, the vehicle, the Bronco, that O.J. Simpson is in right now. Um, but for our standpoint, we ask you to stay with us. Uh, nightfall it causes us problems. Uh, our cameras are, uh, are as high-tech as they can be, and they can operate at a very low light level. But as you can see, um, it, uh, the light is dropping rapidly. If, uh, but the situation is that they are waiting for uh, crisis negotiators. Uh, there are uh, a minimum of four people in the entryway to O.J. Simpson's home uh, about halfway up your screen right now. They have been talking back and forth with Al Callings, who was the driver of this car up from Orange County, the man who fled the home today uh, where O.J. Simpson was with his attorney. And uh, We haven't seen Mr. Callings here in a little while. He's no, we been walking back and forth The last there. time I saw him, he got back into the uh, vehicle. Mm -hmm. um, and. Uh, you know, I raised the possibility that he could be a hostage, but I think above and beyond... Making so much noise, police cannot hear their conversation with O.J. Simpson. He's using a cellular telephone, apparently from inside that white Bronco that you can barely see in the lower portion of the right-hand side of your screen. Uh, there's an unconfirmed report that O.J. Simpson is asking to speak to his mother. There is a hostage negotiator at work at the scene, and we're monitoring the situation We'll have a live special report for you just moments from now. On the line for the first time tonight. Some family members, some Simpson family members, obviously distraught, pushing and shoving with members of the media who were trying to cover the story. They were not allowed past the crime tape initially, but they got in a few minutes later. There's another distraught neighbor, a woman who had just seen Simpson and the driver pull in front of the family home here just about an hour ago. And Let me bring you up to date on uh, new information that we have just received. Uh, O.J. Simpson's attorney, Robert Shapiro, has arrived at the scene. When we last heard from Mr. Shapiro, it was at a news conference during the 5 o'clock Eyewitness News here on Channel 7, and his opening comment was, O.J., please surrender. During the course of his, uh, his recount... As you did hear a few moments ago from Bob Turr, uh, a fine, fine reporter for KCBS Television, he said that the Los Angeles Police Department does have a number of its top-notch people swap. Everywhere I look and everywhere I go. Say what, say what, say what.